Fans know Matt Patricia is the guy who looks like a grizzly bear with the backwards baseball cap. Or at least that's how the Patriots viewed him. But now as the head coach of the Lions, a lot of people have mixed feelings about the guy, and the fan base is starting to get kind of tired of him to be honest. The highlight of Matt Patricia's coaching career came when he made the famous call to put Malcolm Butler in the game and steal the Patriots Super Bowl win over the Seahawks, and that was one of the craziest plays in NFL history. Jim Caldwell was solid. After the Detroit Lions were complete dumpster fire for years, fans were happy with that, but they wanted to take the next step. They're tired of just competing in games. They wanted to maybe win the NFC East or maybe win a Super Bowl someday. So that's why they ended up firing Caldwell and they hired Matt Patricia. He was a guy who served under Bill Belichick for years and everyone thought he could potentially come in and bring the Lions to the next step, except it was quite the opposite. So far he's 10-25-1, which is the third worst winning percentage for any coach in Lions history. The game against the Bears I think summarizes the Matt Patricia era better than any other game. They seemingly had the win, but the Bears came back and DeAndre Swift dropped the easiest touchdown pass I've ever seen in my life and they ended up losing that game. And now they're off to a 1-3 record with losses to the Packers, the Bears in that game, and the Saints. And the fan base is tired of it, and they're tired of Matt Patricia and what he's doing. So in today's video, we're going to talk about the sad truth behind Patricia, and why I think it's finally time for them to move on. As of late, I've kind of not been having as much fun doing YouTube. I've been treating it more as a business, trying to find ways to get views, and picking topics based on that, and not off topics I wanted to do, or I just wasn't really having a lot of fun, which was the point of me making this YouTube channel. To try to have just more fun with the videos I'm making and I really need your guys support so every time you hit that like button it helps the video get in the algorithm it helps more people be able to see it and it shows me that you guys like what I'm doing be sure to leave a comment I want to talk to you guys about the subjects I make so be sure to leave a comment if you're new I talk about football I'm gonna start talking about the NFL more so if you're an NFL fan go ahead and hit that subscribe button as well and turn on post notifications so you never miss another upload now let's get started with the sad truth behind Matt Patricia so in order to talk about Matt Patricia with the Lions, we have to go all the way back to New York where he was born and raised. He was a super smart kid growing up and he played football and absolutely loved it as he was a guy who was on the offensive line. He dominated in high school and was good enough to play at the college level, but he didn't exactly go to a super prestigious football school, it was more on the academic side. He went to Rensselaer Polytechnic Institute which had one of the best aeronautical engineering programs in the country and while he was there he was a four year letterman on the offensive line and he played both center and guard. Coming out of college, he had a pretty big decision to make though. He could have been making $100,000 a year to maintain nuclear submarines and aircraft carriers with some sort of company. Instead, he decided to take a $94,000 pay cut and take a spot on the defensive line for the tiny Amherst College in Western Massachusetts. The salary for that job was $6,000 as I said, and that was pretty gutsy of him to do. The people around him said knowing Matt, it didn't surprise them at all. He's obsessed with football and coaching, and when you have that, nothing really takes its place. Money is one thing, but it comes and goes. You gotta do something you're passionate about, and that's what Matt did. So you gotta give Matt credit for that in taking a big risk. Matt was an offensive graduate assistant at Syracuse for a couple years, and then the NFL came calling. The Patriots offered him a menial gig with entry-level pay, where he would collect and review video. And as we know about Matt, he took the risk. It didn't take long for his gamble to pay off, as he was promoted by Belichick three times over the next six years, before finally getting the official tag as a defensive coordinator in 2012. Belichick's willingness to take a chance on Patricia and be so loyal to him doesn't surprise people. So Patricia became the defensive coordinator and he became one of the top assistants in the NFL. In 2016, he was actually so good that the Browns interviewed him and the Patriots allowed him to go there, but he did not end up getting the job. And I think honestly that would have been a death sentence for Patricia. He did well that year and would lead the Patriots back to the Super Bowl or Malcolm Butler would make his famous play. From there, he was the center of a lot of NFL teams' new coaching search and it came down to the Giants and the Lions. Jim Caldwell had taken the Lions out of the dumpster fire they were and made them into a respectable team and they went 9-7 in 2016, but they were starting to get tired of the mediocrity and they wanted a guy who could potentially take them to the next step by winning the NFC East or maybe even a Super Bowl or just NFC Championship stuff like that. So they ended up firing Caldwell after that in search of a coach who could kind of take them to the next level. They felt as if they could compete with everyone and that they were a good team, but they needed a guy with the it factor who would potentially elevate their team and their franchise to the next level. They ended up selecting Patricia because he was a defensive minded guy, he worked with Belichick for years, and he was a big part of the most successful NFL franchise of the century in the New England Patriots. There was a lot of hype for Patricia going into this, and people really thought he was going to do a good job. Now that Matt Patricia is the head coach for the Detroit Lions, there are two major reasons why it's time for them to move on from him. First, because of his attitude. Second, because of his on-field performance. And let's first start with his attitude problems. Bill Belichick is not known as the friendliest dude to the media, but he is respected for his coaching job. Matt Patricia is kind of trying to be like him as he isn't the nicest dude towards the media and sometimes isn't the nicest towards some of his players. 
and there are two incidents in particular that really summarize that. First, let's start with the Darius Slay incident. When Matt arrived in Detroit, cornerback Darius Slay was coming off his first All-Pro season, and he was seen as one of the best corners in the league at this point. After a workout with Richard Sherman, Akeem Tlaib, and Xavier Rhodes, three of the best guys in the business, Slay was told by Patricia in a meeting that he wasn't elite. Patricia basically told him that he's not in the same category as other guys, and that he's just not elite. Secondly, apparently one day in practice, Slay was beaten by a wide receiver multiple times. Later on, Slay posted a picture on social media with the guy who had beaten him. In a meeting later on that night, Patrick used the social media photo at the start with a small highlight tape of the said player on the board and basically said to stop kissing up to another player, although the coach used different wording on that one. Slay said right there that's when he lost all respect for Matt Patricia as a man and as a person. And you may think Slay is just trying to get some attention from the media, but he is not. Other players who were in the meeting indicate that he did in fact do that, and said that sometimes Patricia would make attempts at jokes that would fall flat with the majority of the room. Basically, without saying it, they're saying that this happened. The second incident involves his attitudes toward the media. Golden Tate was a receiver that was on the Lions for quite a while, and they ended up trading him eventually. A reporter once asked him, why do you think this move makes your franchise better? And this is Patricia's response. Ah, uh, well, you know, do me a favor, just kind of sit up, just like have a little respect for the process. That was his quote, basically making an insult and attacking the reporter. What I find funny about this is, it's not like the Golden Tate trade was stupid, like, people saw it coming and there's no reason to attack the reporter for that and he shouldn't have gotten a lot of crap for responding to the trade because it was a good trade. Finally, he's seen as a dude who's super egocentrical, he isn't the most polite dude, he doesn't let the other coaches on the staff kind of have their own roles, he just wants everything to be done his way and he's not willing to change. Combining all those factors with the fact that the team isn't winning games, that leads me to my second point, the on-field performance of the Detroit Lions. Before he got there with Caldwell, they had gone 36-28 and 28 and had made the playoff twice. Comparing that to where they were a decade ago, I think Lions fans and most NFL franchises would take that in a heartbeat, but again, they wanted more success and they wanted the guy to take him to the next level. As a Bill Belichick disciple, he was expected to come in and change how things went on the field, especially on the defensive side of the ball. In 2017, it was 16th in points allowed. In 2019, it was 26th, and currently going into week 5 of the NFL season, it is 26th. So a guy who was supposedly supposed to be insanely good at defense can't even get his defense in the top half of the league. Another thing that's probably very painful to watch as a Lions fan is blowing these double-digit leads and losing all these close games. Just time after time, even though the Lions are ahead or the game's close at the end, you just know they're going to blow the game. Amongst the Lions coaches, Patricia has the third worst winning percentage of all time. He's 10, 25, and 1 in his third year so far with the Lions. In 2020, they've had two blowouts, a game-winning field goal, and a horribly heartbreaking blown game against the Bears. They're 1-3, and, and it doesn't look like things are going to be getting better. Which leads me to my next point. It's time for the Lions to move on from Matt Patricia. It's time for them to move on from a guy like Matthew Stafford. They have young guys like Kerryon Johnson, TJ Hawkinson, DeAndre Swift, Kenny Galladay, and Quintez Cephas. But it's time to blow it up. It's time for a new quarterback. It's time for a new coach. It's time for a new a lot of things. And they need a guy who can be like Jim Caldwell. So the verdict is that Patricia needs to go. He is now on the list of Belichick disciples that haven't panned out. He's a guy who's always in his head and refuses to make change. He won't let anyone else do anything and he thinks he's the greatest coach on planet Earth. Supposedly for a guy who was supposed to be a defensive mastermind, he can't even coach a top 25 defense in the NFL. He's been a PR nightmare at times and he's run out big name players like Glover Quinn and Darius Slay. He's blown a ton of double digit leads and the team just doesn't look that good. I liked Matt Patricia, I liked the hire when it happened, but I think it's just time for them to move on. What do you guys think down in the comment section? I'm a Colts fan, I haven't been watching the Lions die hard over the past few years, but if you are a Lions fan, let me know what you think down in the comment section. Is it time for Patricia to be fired? And what is it like to even be a Lions fan? I'm genuinely curious about that. If so, who do you think could be some potential replacements for Patricia? And what do you guys think the team should do moving forward? Today was a new style of video, and I really hope you guys enjoyed it. And I'm going to be doing a lot more stuff on this channel, especially adding in some NFL content. So be sure to subscribe if you're new, hit that like button to help this video reach more of an audience, and also be sure to comment a future video suggestion. If you're still here, check out all my other NFL videos, and until next time, peace.